Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, welcome back. Today we will discuss poisson kant reaction, mainly the poisson kant regiochemistry. In the last class we have introduced the poisson kant reaction, it is a oxidative cyclization reaction between alkene, alkyne and carbon monoxide. We get cyclopentenone as a product, that is a very interesting fact. Now, how to put together all these three components to give only one product is really an interesting task. We have seen that mechanism also in the last class. Today, we will discuss more about the regiochemistry of this reaction and also the real examples how it was a stoichiometric reaction first and then an intramolecular version of it and subsequently it has become catalytic as well as intermolecular reactions are nowadays possible. This has been utilized quite a lot for natural product synthesis, even asymmetric versions of the poisson kant reaction is possible. So, all these will be discussed today. Let us look at the key factor that determines the regiochemistry in the poisson kant reaction. Okay. So, poisson kant regiochemistry. Now, as, as we were mentioning the substrate we have in hand is olefin okay, and an alkyne. Usually terminal alkyne works better, but if it is an internal or sub, disubstituted alkyne still it works. Let us say you have R s small group and R l large group. One large group on the alkyne another small group on the alkyne and if you have if they are same you do not have any problem. If you have olefin let us say substituted as R, the product or rather products in this case one can have is two different one okay, where R L could be there, R L usually at close to the, the big L or R group will be close to the carbonyl and the small R will be far from the carbonyl. Now, in one orientation you can have R at this position close to S, another orientation you can have or another regiochemistry you can have where R is close to the carbonyl, right. Always R L is close to the carbonyl, okay. So, as you can see R L and R S one is large one is small, the large one is always close to the carbonyl large substituent is close to the carbonyl, the small substituent is far from it. Now, in this cyclopentenone the R which is coming from this olefin, this R. Now, this R can be far from carbonyl or close to carbonyl, this gives rise to the two regioisomers. Now, as we are saying R L or the large substituent will be always close to carbonyl. And if these R L and R S is not or are not H or is a, if these are not hydrogen then mostly we get this compound 2. Okay. So, the first fact is you will have R L always alpha to carbon nil, R L will be alpha to carbonyl that is the first fact. Second fact would be if R B is not equal R S is not equal H then we get 2 as the product the second product we always get. If regiochemistry at alkene actually the so the R whether it is at the far position or close to the carbonyl it will depend on the alkene as well as alkyne. 
So, the type of alkene and type of alkyne will determine whether R is at this position or R is at that position, right. Also, you know this can be controlled by ligation on the on the different metal center that we will be discussing in a moment. So, what we have seen so far is the rules that governs to give the regio isomers, two isomers are possible as you can see. The substituent R on the olefin can be close to carbonyl or far from carbonyl. Now, that will be determined by the olefin itself and in combination with alkyne substituent. Also, we, we know that the ligand on the metal center required for this reaction can influence the regiochemistry of the product formation. Another important thing is if your um, those alkyne substituents are not H, then usually we can get the product where R from the olefin is alpha to the carbonyl moiety. So, these, these are the things we will see again and again as I was alluding to there was first the stoichiometric version for long and then subsequently in the mid 90s we have seen the catalytic version of this reaction not only intramolecular reaction even intermolecular intermolecular catalytic version was also put forward later on. Let us look at some of the Poisson con reaction examples and we will be discussing two three examples in terms of the natural product or complicated molecule synthesis first, then we will be moving to the catalytic version of these reactions. Okay, Poisson con examples. Let us look at a substrate where you have O T B D M S O and an alkyne together with an olefin. Okay. You have these olefin and alkyne together, you would like to do the Poisson con reaction in presence of CO under the standard reaction condition of the Poisson con what you will get it is a stoichiometric reaction at the beginning as I said this is the product you get cyclo pentenone with, uh, with this very good yield something like uh, eight, nearly 80 percent yield can be obtained and this is the product that is uh, the uh, major product 26 is to 1 regi, uh, regio selectivity or the, um, or the regio chemistry can be maintained quite very effectively. Now, this is reported in tetrahedron in 1985 by Magnus. Okay. This is an intramolecular reaction as you can see the bond formation between this alkyne and olefin and then there is a carbonyl that is coming into picture. Okay. So, overall you see the Poisson con reaction occurs quite efficiently nearly 80 percent yield and uh, 26 is to 1 uh, for the major product formation. Let us look at another example where similarly an alkyne and olefin will be put together along with carbon monoxide CO2, CO8 uh, and stoichiometric amount of them and then this reaction will be um, you know giving you to the desired product. Another example NTS of course, alkyne should be straight, but just to give you the real feeling how might it might will be happening we have drawn like that. Now, this is once again you have an alkyne you have an olefin together and you are doing this reaction in presence of dicobalto octa carbonyl and then with dichloroethane. Overall in this reaction uh, what you get this is again by Magnus in tetrahedron letter 2002 you get the product desired product and that is the cyclize it is a fused cyclic part uh, compound that you one get. So, the 5 member hit, uh, you know cyclopentenone and then your desired product that is there 
in very good yield depending on this nearly the 60 to 70 percent yield can be obtained. Now, these are the really you know powerful reaction for constructing the cyclopentenone kind of uh, intermediate. Now, we will see another example where once again an alkyne and olefin along with the carbon monoxide will put together in presence of dicobalto octa carbonyl species for giving you the cyclobutenone, cyclopentenone intermediate right. Let us look at one more example of this series to establish the fact that these oxidative cyclization are a reliable technique for synthesizing these cyclopentenone products. Okay, now, the example we have had in hand is the one where it is substituted very efficiently once again an olefin terminal olefin and an internal alkyne are participating. This is a report by Giard in 2000 uh, Anguante 2002. So, this is by Giard Anguante 2002. 411783. The product in this case, the starting material you need is again the dicobalto octacarbonyl species, and um, overall you get this product very efficiently, and the desired cyclobutin uh, cyclopentenone is formed uh, rather easily in these cases. Right. So from there on plus minus um, 13 uh, deoxy can be uh, can be synthesized. Those are the natural product synthesis uh, can be done very effectively under this condition. So, what once again you have seen here is a terminal olefin and an internal alkyne put together in presence of carbon monoxide to give you the desired product which is going to be your cyclopentenone which can then be uh, you know further taken towards the natural product synthesis. These are indeed very powerful technique and whenever you see a you know five membered ring with um, cyclopentenone motif or any uh, you know further functionalized motif this is the way perhaps to synthesize it reliably and the yields are usually quite very good. Okay. Now, let us look at the catalytic version of this reaction where in mid 90s it was first reported and we will see first reaction of course, was intramolecular uh, catalytic version and then subsequently people put, uh, put forward even the intermolecular catalytic version for this. But of course, there is a limitation in terms of substrate used for this reaction and we will discuss that in a moment. Okay. Let us look at the catalytic version of these reactions. Okay. First catalytic poisson con reaction, poisson con reaction. Now, the substrate and surprisingly it is an intramolecular substrate okay, where you have alkyne and olefin, terminal alkyne and terminal olefin together. Now, the catalyst that was taken is 3 to 10 percent that is the again the catalytic first catalytic version and dicobalto uh, octa carbonyl species 10 percent 10 mole percent of the ligand that is uh, you know ether version of it and uh, 3 atmosphere pressure of CO. Uh, 120 degree C in DME solvent 48 hours and so on. And the product as expected is the, is the one oxidative after oxidative cyclization under Poisson con condition. Now, this becomes very standard and nearly uh, 80 percent yield greater than 80 percent yield can be obtained for these products. Now, that, that becomes the standard or the hallmark for this sort of reaction. We have seen nowadays whatever Poisson con reaction we do see, usually the reaction conditions are quite similar to these. Okay. A variety of these substituted um, Poisson con products, cyclopentenone, can be synthesized by utilizing this technique. The yields are usually on a higher side, 80 to 90 
a, you know, 80s and 90s for this. Different substituent can also be tolerated under this condition. Well, um, let us look at more of an intermolecular version where we will see always we were so far discussing the substrate where alkyne and olefin are together within one. Now, we will get the intermolecular filling for these reactions. Well, let us let me let me first give you the reference this is a Jax by, by Chang and Jiong uh, 1994 1163159 this is the this is the reference for this and uh, then we will all now discuss the intermolecular version where we will take norbornene type of substrate. So, it is it is a highly substituted one and and of course, it is also a strained one. Now, that alkene as a substrate and first intermolecular version was reported. Okay. Once again with catalytic amount of cobalt that is considered quite a way forward for this kind of reaction at, at, at that stage. Okay. Let us look at intermolecular, intermolecular catalytic poisson con reaction. Okay. So, you need strained olefin for intermolecular reaction. The simple olefin simply does not work. You need strained olefin and you can react it with alkyne, terminal alkyne of course, is the best. Overall, you get overall you get the product that one would expect for this sort of reaction and that is the cyclo strained of course, strained cyclo uh, pentinone type of moiety uh, can be synthesized very easily. And the catalyst that is used for these reactions are the one where you have the cobalt in it along, along with cobaltosin called moiety together. Now, this is reported by once again Chang and Jiang in JAX 1994 and this is a very good effective reaction not only this you know you can take terminal alkyne different alkyne can be reacted quite efficiently uh, utilizing this technique. Let us look at some of the specific example by utilizing this norbornene or norbornadiene as an ol olefin counterpart along with the internal alkyne or terminal alkyne to give you the poisson con product which was reported in mid 90s. Okay. Let us look at look at those examples. So, we will take norbornadiene as the first example where phenyl acetylene is utilized as the substrate to give you the final product where once again the desired cyclopentenone ring is formed quite efficiently. This is nearly 90 percent yield and if you are taking a propargyl alcohol once again you can get the product. Uh, the desired product with this once again with norborne diene and uh, this regiochemistry is quite efficient and only one product is forming usually for these cases. And uh, if you are taking an internal alkyne that is also possible to react quite efficiently and that gives the product uh, once again quite efficiently under the condition the cyclopentinone product the desired cyclopentinone product are formed as you see phenyl is right next to the carbonyl methyl is there. So, these are quite efficient of course, uh, you know these intermolecular uh, reaction condition intermolecular uh, poisson con reaction and that is uh, uh, under the catalytic uh, catalytic amount of the cobalt catalyst. Um, cobalt is used for, for these reactions. You can usually the only limitation that we can see for these reactions is it has to be uh, it has to be strained olefin such as norbornene or norbornadiene as we have seen in these cases. Of course, under these reaction condition one can do 
the, the intramolecular reaction as well without any problem the yields are even pretty good 100 percent product formation can be obtained with this of course. So, now as I was telling not only not only it is possible to do the catalytic Poisson Cohn reaction it is possible to do intermolecular uh, catalytic Poisson Cohn reaction it is also possible to do um, the asymmetric version of these reactions by utilizing a suitable ligand for the metal center. Now, instead of cobalt initially people were using titanium as the um, titanesin comp compounds for this sort of reaction. Let us look at the asymmetric version of this Poisson Cohn reaction which could be quite interesting because, because there are desired target molecules where we need this stereocenter to be generated. So, asymmetric Poisson Cohn reactions. Of course, these are again catalytic asymmetric Poisson Cohn reactions. Well, we will take the intermolecular version of course, at this point. Okay. So, that is rightly and nicely set you take 5 to 20 percent of the titanocin complex and CO 14 PSI, toluene and 12 hour 90 degree C you get the stereo center that could be generated right over here and then cyclopentenone can be generated from this product quite efficiently. The catalyst that is used for these cases are quite interesting one and nowadays it is a very familiar one and popular one as well. And um, this, this gives the product quite efficiently and um, you know this product formation can be uh, done under very mild condition relatively mild condition as you see uh, 90 degree C is very efficient for this sort of product. So, if this is E B T H I that is how they uh, that is how they abbreviate titanium dicarbonyl species this is S S version of it and this this is giving the product quite efficiently as, as we mentioned and um, we, we get the asymmetric center generated in a very high EE something like greater than 90 percent EE for most of these cases. Okay. This is reported uh, by Buckwald in uh, Jack's 1996 118 Okay. And also there is a recent review in 2006 by Sibata in Advanced in CAT in 2006 you may want to read. So, the yield for these sort of reactions are quite good and enantioselectivity selectivity is usually greater than 90 that is efficient for this sort of reaction. And uh, as you can see by using these titanesin reagent uh, Buckwald and co-workers were able to get very efficient reaction and the stereochemistry can be set quite uh, quite nicely and that could be a very useful method for uh, natural product synthesis. So, we have once again see an inter or sorry intramolecular version of the Poisson Cohn reaction where alkyne and olefin are put together along with carbon monoxide the you know 14 psi um, carbon monoxide at 90 degree C which is a very good reaction condition to give you the good yield and good enantial selectivity for these reactions. A plenty of plenty of examples you can look at in that reference or um, you know different substituents are also tolerated different functional group were also tolerated under these reaction condition. Let us look at another example of uh, asymmetric Poisson Cohn reaction before uh, before we close this. Okay. So, we will be looking at Poisson Cohn reaction in uh, asymmetric version once again. So, catalytic asymmetric Poisson Cohn reaction in this case we will be uh, we will be uh, looking at the example where you have an internal alkyne yet. We will we'll come back to the mechanism of it and 3 percent rhodium chloride rhodium 1 um, CO2 2 was used along with BINAP and silver OTF 1 to 3 atmosphere pressure of carbon monoxide THF 90 to 130 degree C is usually used 
one, uh, this is this is a uh, you know three using three percent rhodium catalyst now now this can also give the uh, very so binaf is the one which is the uh, chiral ligand in there and you can get the desired product efficiently by utilizing this method and in, in these cases yields are usually 80 to 90s EEs could be little low 70s but those are quite efficient uh, without any problem this can be done and different variation as well as the substituents are tolerated under this reaction condition. Okay. So, we have seen two asymmetric reactions one was with titanocene compound another was with binaf rhodium compound which is quite interesting and you can get the stoic you know you can get the um, reaction yield quite high e could be um, varying in uh, varying from uh, you know 60 or 70s to 90s but overall this is a reliable method to form the desired portion con product with an asymmetric center in them okay we'll in a moment we will look at the mechanism of that Buckwald's example where titanium catalyst is used. Okay. So, once again this is a very simple Poisson Khan type of reaction mechanism that we were discussing earlier. Let us look at that example where Poisson Khan uh, reaction mechanism is discussed. So, the ligand that we were using is that EBTHI titanium dicarbonyl species from here on the substrate that is required is intra, uh, intra molecular uh, this alkyne and olefin one and this substrate comes in one of the carbon monoxide goes out and overall you form a um, cyclopropene titano intermediate uh, titano cyclopropene intermediate and that gives the substrate interaction first. Um, so, um, th that alkyne interacts first with titanium and then the olefin is right over there. Of course, if you have E B T H I that ligand with it and subsequently you get the product where titanium is in a 5 member metallocycle formation mode and with the substituent. So, the alkyne oxidative cyclization between the alkyne and olefin is taking place right now and that gives you the uh, intermediate like uh, two fused five member intermediate from here on carbon monoxide can be inserted into this titan titanium metal cycle intermediate overall giving a uh, six member intermediate right now. Subsequently reductum, reductive elimination can give you the product formation from these cases. So, the desired product Poisson Khan product can be formed with asymmetric center in it um, quite efficiently by utilizing this technique. So, what in this mechanism what we have seen so far the titanium reagent is interacting with the alkyne first to form the cyclopropene type of intermediate titanocyclopropene intermediate of course, the chiral ligand is attached with it uh, with the with the titanium and then this intermediate cyclopropene titano intermediate interacts with the olefin and cyclization occurs. So, it gives you the fused 5 member 5 member intermediate where one of the 5 member is having the titanium in it then carbon monoxide gets into that 5 member metal cycle intermediate and finally, reductive elimination gives you the product Poisson Khan product with asymmetric center induction in it. So, the cyclization taking this path uh, or cyclization step is determining the stereochemistry uh, of, of the product that we, we see finally of course, during the reductive elimination once regenerate the catalyst to go on for the next cycle. Well, we, we have seen the versatile Poisson Khan reaction their application for various natural product synthesis. We have seen the um, stoichiometric version first intramolecular stoichiometric version then intermolecular reactions along with the catalytic version catalytic intra and intermolecular version and finally, we have seen the, the asymmetric version of these uh, uh, of these Poisson Khan reaction. We have seen one example from Buckwald group another uh, we have seen with the rhodium uh, along with this and the mechanism also has been discussed briefly for this sort of reaction. Now, as you see various other metal in of course, it started with cobalt then we have seen titanium and rhodium also have been used. So, now Poisson Khan reaction is widely applicable both in industry and academia and it is it is the 
it is the most reliable technique to synthesize cyclopentenone or its uh, derived compound um, and it can be reliably synthesized as you see even the enantial selectivity can be very high for these reactions. So, with this we would like to conclude today's class and keep studying this oxidative cyclization reaction and feel free to ask question as you may have. Thank you.